There's something to be said about small moments in anime that make a big impression. One Piece is littered with such moments. They serve as catalysts for plot progression and character development. They might even provide some foreshadowing of the important events to come. Sometimes they're integral to the overall story or the arc in which they occur, and sometimes they're a juicy accompaniment that might not be central to the story, but they definitely make it better. Almost always, they depict courage, heroism and attitude, qualities we look for in all of our favourite anime characters. Naturally, they're all badass moments. On that note, here are the top 10 badass moments in One Piece. There are major plot revelations ahead here, so a spoiler alert is now in full effect. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> At number 10 we have the moment when Zoro cuts Pika in half. The shape-shifting enemy that can turn an entire country into a part of his body gives the Straw Hats immeasurable trouble in the Dress Rosa arc. They might laugh at his squeaky voice, but they know better than to make light of one of the top three officers of the Don Quixote family. So, to see Zoro, who spent a lot of his time in Dress Rosa wandering off and getting lost, cut the stone monster in half is immensely satisfying. He then proceeds to slice and dice Pika, forcing him to reveal himself in his true form. Pika's defeat is proof of Zoro's growing strength and skill. It takes him that much closer to his goal of becoming the world's greatest swordsman. His belief that there's nothing he can't cut makes this one of those moments you can't help but cheer loudly for. <laughs> Next up is a hockey fight Luffy knocking out 50,000 fishmen in the Fishmen Island arc. When Hody Jones boasts that Luffy and his crew number just 10, whereas he has 100,000 men at his disposal, even some of the Straw Hats are overwhelmed by the threat. Luffy reduces that threat by half in an instant. Talk about evening the odds, hey? It's a proud moment for the Straw Hats who realize their captain has mastered Conqueror's Haki. For fans, it's the payoff we get to see after the two years Luffy spent training with Rayleigh. What also contributes to making this moment special is the fact that One Piece uses its Haki sparingly. Unlike a lot of other anime that overexpose their power-ups, Haki's a rare commodity in One Piece, mastered by a chosen few and used only in big moments. For Luffy, the incident at Fishman Island is one of his early uses of Haki after the time skip, but remains an unforgettable memory. <laughs> It's another one-man show at number 8 with Law cutting Punk Hazard in half. For all of his lectures to Luffy about the virtues of lying low and fighting cautiously, the captain of the Heart Pirates is known to make some big and bold moves every now and then. Challenging Doflamingo to a fight for purely personal reasons is one. Plotting the fall of Kaido is another. As for his flashiest moment in battle, it's without a doubt his dismantling of Virgo and the island of Punk Hazard. Showing that he's one of the most imaginative devil fruit powers around, Law needs just one swing of his blade to cut Virgo in half, despite the latter's body being entirely armoured in Haki. In the process, the facility, which produces the main ingredient for Doffy's fake devil fruits and the mountain it's built on also get carved beyond repair. It's a moment where you can't help but be impressed by the surgeon of death. No. At number 7 we have a special moment from the Marine for Dark, which is crowded with special moments. Look. 
After taking the aerial route into the fortress-like marine headquarters, Luffy gets airborne once again, this time using a pillar of water and a ship's mast to propel himself towards the execution platform and ace. But standing in his way are the three admirals. Talking purely from the visual standpoint, the image of the young upstart standing up to the Navy's three strongest warriors and directly challenging their authority makes for a great poster. However, Luffy recklessly facing off against Aokiji, Kizaru and Ekainu is important not only for the visuals and the events taking place. It seems in all likelihood to be a foreshadowing of the final confrontation between the man who will be the Pirate King and the authority standing in his way. We can't wait to see what happens when the anime eventually winds down to such a finale. Up next is a similar scene from the Ennis lobby arc, this time with the Straw Hats challenging not the Navy, but the world government. And this time too, the reason is personal. Robin's being captured by the CP9, the world government's top secret group of assassins. Luffy and gang break into Eni's lobby, the notoriously fortified judicial island that serves as the organization's headquarters. Rarely do we see the Straw Hats stand as a single team in one frame. Most of the time they're off doing their own thing, but here, seeing them all together on the roof of the courthouse and standing shoulder to shoulder as they challenge the CP9 and its leader Spandam, it's impossible not to feel the rush of excitement. The detestable Spandam points to the futility of their challenge, bragging that the small crew's no match for the government's might. In response, Luffy has Soge King shoot a flaming arrow at the government flag. It's a declaration of war that shows Luffy has no problem picking a fight with someone bigger and stronger than him. <laughs> The Straw Hats walk to Arlong Park to challenge Arlong takes the fifth spot. This was at a time when the crew had only four members, and it comes right after that unforgettable scene where the usually ballsy Nami breaks down in tears and asks Luffy to help her save her village from the tyranny of the Arlong Pirates. Handing his hat to his future navigator for safekeeping, Luffy gathers his troops, which comprises of Zoro, Sanji and Usopp, and the four march to Arlong Park. It's an iconic moment reminiscent of many a memorable walking scene from the movies. When sidekicks Johnny and Yosaku tell the villagers these four men are worth betting their lives on, you might find yourselves nodding in agreement. Again, in terms of imagery, this moment makes the same impact as the previously discussed challenge to the world government at Eni's lobby and the Straw Hats' farewell to Vivi in the Alabaster arc. It just goes to show that putting the Straw Hats together in one frame is a thing of magic. I think for a lot of fans, this was a turning point in the series where they went from liking the series to loving it and I can see exactly why. The Marineford arc is the one arc in one piece that's guaranteed to make the viewer an emotional wreck thanks to its numerous acts of courage, betrayals and god-awful tragedy. It also has one of the most powerful conclusions as Shanks appears during the final assault and puts an end to what's now just senseless fighting. Due to this intervention, Luffy gets away safely, Akainu is stopped, thousands of lives are saved and the fallen get the dignity they deserve in death. It's a moment that reveals the true strength of this Yonko, who's remained a mystery to us all these years despite being a central figure in Luffy's life. That fleet Admiral Sengoku is willing to listen to him, an adversary and a pirate, raises our expectations for what Shanks is capable of in the future. This is also one of the few times we see Shanks as the powerful pirate that he is, with his ship and crew by his side. Cameo appearances don't get any more powerful than this. まだ暴れ足りない奴がいるのなら。こいつら。これ式で。俺は。俺は。<笑> 
White Beard's entrance at Marineford is anime legend by now, his death even more epic, but there's a moment in between that really says a lot about the kind of man he is. There's no honour in ganging up on an opponent, even one as fearsome as the towering Whitebeard, yet the Marines single him out, throwing everything they've got at him. It's a good strategy, but hardly heroic. What's heroic is Whitebeard's response as he stops his crew from rushing to his aid. I am Whitebeard, he roars. Even with his body bearing hundreds of battle wounds and cannonball smoke right rising from his face, with just these words he makes the marines, who pride themselves as upholders of justice, look dirty and dishonourable. And those aren't empty words. Whitebeard goes on to show the marines just who they're messing with and we can't help but be proud. As you might already know, in One Piece, the Celestial Dragons aren't just nobility, but practically godlike. Even the carefree Luffy understands that they're not to be trifled with, no matter what atrocities they commit. Well, he gets it in theory, at least, anyway. But when the idiotic Saint Charlos shoots Hachi at the slave auction and Luffy gets that glint in his eye, you know it's not going to end well for the high-handed noble. Hachi's entreaties to Luffy to let the matter slide, even going to the extent of saying he deserves to be shot, makes no difference to Luffy, who marches up to Charlos and socks him in the face. One punch and Charlos is out for the count. Apparently, that fishbowl-like headgear the Celestial Dragons wear isn't exactly much protection. What Luffy does is audacious, even for someone who's in the habit of doing the exact opposite of what he's told. But seeing a bully get what he deserves is immensely satisfying. <laughs> And that brings us to number one, and it's Zoro's finest hour yet in the service of his captain. Having realised that Luffy and the rest of the crew are too exhausted from their battle with Gekko Moria and his zombie army to have any real chance of survival against Bartholomew Kuma, Zoro makes the ultimate sacrifice. Unknown to them, the proud swordsman gets down on his knees and asks the warlord to spare Luffy and the others, offering himself up for punishment on their behalf. Due to the nature of Kuma's powers, that means taking all of Luffy's pain and fatigue into his own body. I'll show you hell. Kuma promises, reminding Zoro that he might not survive the ordeal. Zoro does survive it somehow, and when Sanji later finds him covered in blood but still standing, he asks what happened. Nothing happened. A typical answer from a man of few words, and yet it's so telling. It's just one of the many things that make this strong and loyal pirate such a badass. The fact that Luffy doesn't know about this little incident to this day makes this moment even more special. <laughs> So there you have it, the top 10 badass moments in One Piece. Which one do you think was the most badass? Write to me in the comments section below and let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, press the like button. You can also subscribe to Vinitube for more anime and One Piece content. There's plenty here that might catch your otaku eye. Be sure to tune in for my next video and until then, goodbye and stay safe.